here quickly. So thanks for having me already at half past uh, eight. So another beer, and uh, I would sing on stage probably. So uh, uh, so let me uh, introduce uh, you another uh, application of cryptocurrencies. It can really simplify your life. So. Uh, Last week, uh, so it all started last week, I looked at the Cardano chart on the uh, valuation of this currency and I immediately spotted a, a peak, right, immediately. So uh, I, I thought to myself, let's, let's have a closer look and I zoomed into this, right. So uh, here you clearly see it. So if I enlarge it, you see it even more clearly. So uh, around April 26, around midnight, it surged immediately. I mean, this is a crazy... Uh, event happening here, so uh, and it, it searched right at the time when we submitted or announced the new result. Right? So that's, I mean, that's great feedback, right? It tells you, well done. That's immediately, and uh, it's very objective. This market, it's unbiased, even so. It's uh, the unbiased opinions are the best ones, they say. So uh, I thought to myself, well, I mean, before I now tell you what the submission really was, I tell you this is a more general concept. Uh, you can analyze your, your day with that and then see which, which actions you take are positive and which, uh, which are negative. So uh, I just went into this and uh, well, here's the chart of a normal day of mine. So I start to work in the morning. Some people don't call it morning, but I call it morning. And uh, so you see it goes up, right? So uh, the value, it, it increases. So we're very, it's, this is very good. Then I took a break. Didn't look so good. So, I mean, it dropped, so sorry, sorry for all of you. So, uh, yes, but then, uh, I mean, after some up and downs uh, during this working day, I did some sports, and uh, I mean, sport is healthy, and, and you really see that. Uh, I mean, it went up again when uh, cycling a bit, and uh, well, then I got home and uh, my girlfriend told me to, uh, to vacuum clean the entire flat. <laughs> so you, you, you guess what happens, right? I mean, it, it drops immediately here. I mean, it's, I mean, I mean uh, it, this is just the data, right? I mean, data doesn't lie. You all know it. It's, it's just a fact, right? And I was very surprised. And uh, of course, I approached my girlfriend later and, and told her that, I mean, yeah, it's just a fact. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, well, it didn't end that well, so I have to admit, uh, don't try this at home. Uh, but uh, me as a researcher, so what, what kind of surprised me that even this event was reflected in the, in the chart. So complete chaos the entire night, not only, I mean, yeah. anyway, so yeah. I mean, it's, it's still ongoing research, so I don't fully understand this dynamic that happened there. But uh, you might imagine it can only, only be ongoing if I survive, a, I mean, a, more, a couple of more of those incidents. So, uh, but I hope to do so. So uh, let, let me get back to the motivating example, actually. Uh, so what, what initiated this study at all? So it was an event on April 26. We announced Ouroboros Genesis. And uh, this is the uh, proof of stake protocol without checkpointing. So what do I mean? So let's briefly recap. Checkpointing is, is, the, is when honest parties uh, kind of don't accept new chains if they, if they don't agree on, on old blocks, right? If, if, if new chains arrive and try to rewrite the entire history, that's what is, we mean with checkpointing. So, so uh, what this uh, new result gives you is uh, we bootstrap uh, so as a side effect of this, boot, uh, of this checkpointing, if, if a new party joins kind of a network in uh, proof of stake protocols, I mean, it has to be initialized right, by an honest node telling uh, this party, well, this is a good chain. And uh, so this is a very negative side effect. So removing this is really a, a very important step. And uh, so we did that. So in, in, our, in this new protocol, parties can join and leave at will. Whenever they join, they get automatically locked in into the most recent chain. They don't have to do anything. They just uh, they don't have to be initialized. They just get used to uh, what is honest. So that's very good. And uh, of course, this only makes uh, fun to, to do if uh, you have a dynamic participation model. Uh, so when parties can come and leave uh, when they want. And uh, I, I think here it's appropriate to, to quote 
uh, an, a very old uh, American philosopher who, who once said, uh, I mean, this is uh, awesome, uh, it's huge and it's hard. It might be taken a bit out of context here, but it has never been more true. So this new result is awesome because it really solves uh, a practical uh, problem. It's, uh, I mean, it's huge because uh, this, was con this bootstrapping was considered the main uh, uh, issue in practice of proof of stake. Uh, and it's hard because uh, uh, we really had to redo, with this dynamic participation, uh, we had to redo uh, the, the entire martingale analysis that appeared uh, in prior work to accommodate for adaptive uh, strategies that the adversary can say. And actually, just among us, for the last few seconds, so it, uh, actually Trump was quoted wrongly, he also added it's UC. So uh, uh, we also do it in the universal composability framework. Okay. So. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, so this is joint work with Peter Gashi, Agilos Elias, Alexander Russell, and Vasily Stikas. You find it on your print. Thank you. Okay, next.